You know, over the last couple of months, I've actually been focusing a lot on Apple devices, on Mac and everything. So a company reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out a Windows tablet slash laptop. I've had good luck with these things in the past, and so I said absolutely. So today we're going to be taking a look at the iRuleU or iRulu Walkenbook W20. This is a 10.1 inch Windows tablet PC. It's running Windows 10. It's a two in one, so it is a tablet as well as a laptop. As you can see, the box came with a little bit of damage. I did go ahead and open the box up just to check and make sure nothing appears to be damaged. There's a layer of foam. We'll see that in a minute. But looking around the box, there's really no info on it as to specs or anything other than just these images on the front of some things that are included. So I guess we should probably just open it up and see. Spin it around. So of course, center of the action here, we do have the tablet. We'll come back to that. You get a little quick start guide. Gives you an introduction to Windows and whatnot. Basic operations and warranty information in multiple languages. Nifty little package here with what I can only assume is the cover slash keyboard. You can see on here, it does have pogo pins. So it's gonna click in here and hold it in place. And presumably that's going to make the connection for the actual keyboard to work and the trackpad. And this actually has a little bit of folding action to it. Kind of reminds me of the newer Microsoft Surface devices. So I'll have to see how that works out. But it looks like it just sort of folds together like this or like that. We'll, we'll see in a minute. And then there's this little white box here, which has a USB type A to type C cable, a USB type C to full size USB adapter, and then a USB wall wart that outputs five volts at two amps. And there was a SIM ejector tool. I don't really recall reading anything about it having a SIM card slot, but we'll check. And so here, is the tablet. This is available in two different colors, orange and green, but the green is not overpowering. It's not covering the entire surface or anything. The back is completely black. It does have a lot of FCC logos and power source information down here. A lot of branding on the back, as well as a rear facing camera. Taking a look over at the Amazon listing, it does mention the front facing camera is two megapixels. The rear facing camera is five megapixels. So they're not gonna blow you out of the water or anything. And it does appear that this actually has a screen protector pre-applied. So let's go ahead and just peel that away. Yeah. So it does have a screen protector, but I don't know how long it'll stay on there. You can see it's bubbled up around the camera here. It's got bubbles all down the side. So it was pre-applied, which does help keep down on scratching and whatnot if you're gonna be putting this in the hands of kids or something, but it was applied kind of poorly. We'll go ahead and peel the plastic off the back as well. Gives you a nice smooth, shiny finish if you don't mind that. Taking a look around the outside, there's nothing along the top. It's a curved edge. It's a flat edge on the right hand side with just a speaker grill. Left hand side has another speaker grill, power button, volume rocker, USB type C, looks like micro HDMI, three and a half millimeter, and what I was assuming is the SIM card slot, but it's probably a micro SD card slot. Let's just go ahead and check before we even turn it on. Yeah, that's all micro SD. Although no, looking at it a little bit closer, it does appear to be a SIM card slot as well. It goes either way. So I'll be curious to see if that actually works for a SIM card because that could be a really neat option. Of course, on the bottom, we forgot to mention here, these are the clip-in points and the pogo pins. So let's see how it works with its little case. Feels like it's got some magnetism to it, so it is pulling it in. And it doesn't make a real strong solid connection but it is solid enough that it's holding on. But if you just pull on it, it comes off. And then to actually hold it up, presumably you'd put these two together. There you go, it's gonna hold it at that angle. And then it does fold up here and kind of magnetizes onto the back. So that that's actually a pretty cool little option. Now switching things around here a little bit so you can get an actual look at the device itself. Let's go ahead and hold the side button here to power it on. Looks like it does have power. And interestingly enough, it turns sideways there and the other way. And now we go through the Windows setup process. Getting to the Wi-Fi section here, I should mention that it's not noticing my 5G networks. Just thought I'd throw that out there. The trackpad doesn't have any actual buttons, but you can click on it on the left or on the right, and presumably that'll be left and right mouse button. Typing on the keyboard was actually quite nice. Looks like the keyboard layout is a little bit odd. The zero and the dash are a little bit close to each other, so I kept hitting dash instead of hitting the zero. And just to get things going, we'll choose express settings and just kind of make our way through. And yeah, trying the typing again, the keys are just a little bit tiny, so you have to kind of scrunch your fingers together, but it gets the job done. And a few minutes later, we are in Windows. You can see if I click over here, we've got the menu, and actually I can swipe up and down to scroll through things. Trackpad's getting the job done. Taking a look at some of the system settings here, you can see it is the iRulu W20. I'm gonna say iRulu has the Atom Z8350 CPU. It's 1.44 gigahertz. Although it mentions in the listing, it's supposed to be a 1.92 gigahertz Cherry Trail CPU. It has two gigs of RAM. It's a 32-bit operating system with an X64 processor and touch support with up to 10 touch points. The battery life over here 
mentions it's got four and a half hours remaining at 67%, so if it sticks to that, that's awesome. Taking a quick second to look up that Z8350 processor, according to Intel, that's the 1.92 gigahertz Cherry Trail processor. For what reason it's coming up as 1.44, I'm not really sure. The other things to mention there, it does have two gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of built-in storage. So if we come in and look at this, it says 28 gigs available, 18.9 of that is free. So you're probably gonna want to stick a micro SD card in there if you're planning to do anything that's data intensive. And we're back, it's a day later. I attempted to run 3 Mark, and that obviously was not a great option. You can see here it's showing the processors, the Atom X5 1440 megahertz. It's had a lot of problems with that processor. It's just been confused by it. And the results of the benchmark, I can't actually pull them up for some reason at the moment, but it was about 200 when most other benchmarks would be much, much higher. But again, this is not a gaming PC. This is, it's it's a tablet, laptop, convertible two-in-one kind of thing. I did, however, install Minecraft Windows 10 Edition. I've set it to full screen mode. I've scaled the GUI down. It does have fancy graphics and fancy leaves turned on, though. And I can actually go into some advanced video settings here, change the render distance and whatnot, but by default, it's set to eight chunks. You could set it up if you wanted to, although, again, I probably would not. There's 20 chunks, though. And it is playable. It is working. I did turn on auto jumping just to make it a little easier to control. But you can, of course, control it with the keyboard and mouse as well, the trackpad. And I haven't spent a whole lot of time with this, just a couple of minutes sort of running around and messing about. But realistically, for the type of specs that this actually has, it's pretty impressive. I'm able to run around and punch things and break trees. You know, it's Minecraft, as you do. And actually, like I said, I've got 20 chunks loaded right now, and it's still going admirably. The other things I've tested with it, they've all performed okay. As you can see, it's still showing five hours of battery life remaining, but once you actually start using it, once you use anything in the browser or start actively playing games, that's going to drop off pretty quickly. I haven't run it down or anything. The sort of problems and issues that I've had with this so far have mainly stemmed around this keyboard case and the fact that there's really no solid connection. So, I mean, as soon as I barely pull on it, it does come loose. It is kind of nice that it always pops up and asks if I want to switch it over to tablet mode, but as I was getting at, it does make that sort of magnetic connection and it does stay solidly but if you put any amount of pressure on it it comes off and while this does have magnets in it and it does magnetize to the back of the screen it doesn't make a solid connection here either so this is going to go flopping around so just sort of suffice to say there i'm not a big fan of the whole keyboard case thing the trackpad itself is also just not terribly great to use. Somehow I end up doing a bunch of other combinations and going into other screens. I don't necessarily want to, but in terms of just usability, in terms of being a laptop and a tablet and a usable machine, I think it's actually getting the job done appropriately. For the price point, it's about $220. That puts it in the low-end laptop slash Chromebook category, in terms of my opinion. The one thing that you're missing out on this, you're missing out on a little bit of RAM and a little bit of storage that you might get if you moved over to a Chromebook or you might get in a traditional laptop. But at the same time, you get that convertibility, that ability to have a full touch screen and to use it as a tablet and also to come back and use it with a keyboard when you want to. Is it worth that? I'll leave that up to you. So leave your thoughts and your comments down below if you're interested. I'll put a link to where you can find it over on Amazon if you want to look it up. But thanks so much to I Rule You for sending this out for me to take a look at. Thanks to you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel to receive more, and I will see you next time.